1957, only a few years after he'd begun to collect art, Norton Simon spotted a small, beguiling 15th century painting in the New York showroom of the Duveen Brothers Art Gallery. Entitled Portrait of a Courtesan, the picture depicted a sensuous young woman with a delicate floral wreath on her head. Then, as now, scholars have delighted in discussing and disputing this painting's authorship, attributing it variously to Titian, Giorgione, Rocco Marcone, Giovanni Cariani, Bonifazio Veronese, or any imitator of any of these artists. And many have wavered in their attribution, as did the famed art historian Bernard Berenson, who published it in 1932 as a Titian, and then in 1957 as a Giorgione, long after he had left the employ of the Duveen firm. By 1963, despite some hesitation due to the question of attribution, Norton Simon agreed to purchase the painting over a two-year period. And in the course of those two years, he expressed an interest in first an additional seven and then additional five objects in Duveen stock, until eventually he decided to purchase the whole inventory of about 800 objects, along with the Duveen mansion and its entire library. Duveen Brothers Gallery was once one of the largest and most successful art dealerships in the world. Founded in 1879 in England, the firm, under Lord Joseph Duveen, was responsible for helping some of the most prominent American businessmen build their renowned art collections, Henry Clay Frick and Henry Huntington among them. And he was a key component in planting the seed of an idea into the thoughts of Andrew Mellon for building an American National Gallery for Art. By the time Simon began collecting in the mid 1950s, Duveen was run and owned by Edward Fowles. Then in his 70s, Fowles had begun working at Duveen in 1898, when, as a 13-year-old, he served as assistant to the receptionist in the London office. After a lengthy and successful career, for the most part in their Paris gallery, Fowles and the House of Duveen were now based in New York with a small, loyal staff, most of whom were well past retirement age. In 1964, when Simon and Fowles finalized the sale of the firm, the purchase price of $4 million ensured a comfortable life for Fowles and his staff. And with that one purchase, Simon planted his foot squarely in the market for old masters and began his quest to build a collection that expanded beyond the 18th and 19th century European art that had been his primary focus of collecting up until that time. Over the next decade, we're in the 1970s now, Simon auctioned off much of the Duveen stock that fell outside the parameters of paintings and sculpture, such as a large assortment of French period furniture and decorative arts. What pieces remain today in the Norton Simon collections number around 130 objects, primarily paintings, a handful of sculptures, a few porcelains, and even a sumptuous mantle that was used in investiture ceremonies for an order created by Spain's Charles III in the 18th century. Some of the most noteworthy artworks from the Duveen purchase, about two dozen or so, are installed in the museum's permanent collection and can be seen year-round. They include important objects, such as this painting by Fragonard, his charming happy lovers from around 1760, or Vincenzo Catena's evocative rest on the flight into Egypt, painted around 1510. There is Clodion's galvanizing Bacante, supported by Bacchus and a faun, from around 1795, Giuseppe de Ribera's enigmatic sense of touch from around 1615, 
and Rigaud's powerful portrait of Antoine Paris from 1724. There are a remaining hundred or so objects that came from Duveen's that are less frequently exhibited. The appearances of some, like this 16th century portrait of a man, have been greatly altered at some point in history by well-meaning restorers. In the 1920s, the Duveen firm hired an independent conservator to clean this painting. But as he began to remove its varnish and passed at restorations and overpainting, he found that the work was, in his words, in a terrible state. The conservator was instructed by Duveen's to halt his work immediately and put the picture back into the condition in which it was before. Later, the painting was carefully analyzed in 1965 at the New York University Conservation Lab, and in 1988, the restorer Mario Modestini performed a delicate intervention, removing old restorations, reworking the larger loss near that proper right ear, and restretching the canvas. At that point, a variety of attributions were posited, including not only the name of Titian, but also Bernardino Licinio, Giovanni Cariani, and Lorenzo Lotto. And in another example, perhaps the most startling aspect of this portrait of a Venetian nobleman, is the fact that it's painted over another fully finished and cut down portrait of a seated man with a beard. Seen clearly in an x-ray, the painting beneath is most likely by a different hand that several experts have suggested could be by Leandro Bassano. This secondary portrait was discovered during a routine conservation examination in 1978. After the small window was opened to expose the eyes of the sitter beneath, Mr. Simon suggested that it could be exhibited as is. He thought that visitors might be riveted by the idea of a painting covered by another painting. While the dating of the uppermost portrait is unclear, what is certain is that it is either a studio version or a later copy after the commanding portrait of Giacomo Dolphin, painted around 1531 by Titian himself. That portrait now hangs just across town at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. These are just two examples of paintings rarely on view at the museum, but which shed a fascinating light on the state of both the art market and art restoration in the first half of the 20th century. Altogether, the works from Mr. Simon's bold en bloc purchase offer us an historical look at the infamous figure of Joseph Duveen and his firm that lived on 25 years after his death. And by the same token, the Duveen purchase marked a serious turning point in Norton Simon's art collecting career, adding the sobriquet Old Masters to the expanding list of artists and eras that Simon was doggedly pursuing as he put together his exquisite collection. We invite you to learn more about this fascinating story in the exhibition Lock, Stock, and Barrel, Norton Simon's Purchase of Duveen Brothers Gallery, on view at the museum October 24, 2014 through April 27, 2015.